my life flashed before my eyes. Get out! It was so frightening. You are about to see real people. I felt like I was going to die. Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. I knew that I was in danger. It's not normal to see something like that. When creatures from hell terrify the living. They wanted to hurt her. I was frozen in fear. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. Survivor, Grim Reaper, take one, Mark. It was a semi detached back split, definitely larger than what I had lived in before. Monica was 20 years old when she moved into her new home, excited for a new chapter in her life. But the feeling didn't last long. The night terrors started about a week after I moved in. No, no. It was people being killed in various forms. Dismemberment, being hung, burned alive decapitation. I couldn't figure out why I was having these night terrors. I never had anything like that happen to me before. The nightmares lasted for months. But then, Monica witnessed something truly evil. I woke up one night I had seen what seemed like a dark shadow by the closet. I couldn't fall asleep. And then right at the foot of the bed, I see the Grim Reaper holding a scythe. And on the bed was a gargoyle, almost like alligator skin. It had claws. I was horrified. The gargoyle would turn to the Grim Reaper, waiting for a command as to whether to attack. At first, I thought it was just a horrific nightmare, but then every single night, the Grim Reaper and the gargoyle would be there, just standing at the foot of my bed. I had come to realize this was real. It, it scared me to my core. Monica started finding painful reminders of her nighttime terror. I do remember having some bruises and unexplained scratches on my back. I had no idea as to what was happening, why it was happening. I knew that I was in danger. I knew that I was, I was in serious trouble. This impacted my day-to-day -day life. I was afraid to go to bed. I was afraid to go to my room. I did not want to be at home at all. It got so bad sometimes where I would actually just go to sleep on the living room sofa with rosary beads and the Bible, just so that I'd feel protected. Our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name? But to us from evil, amen. I suffered alone. I didn't think anyone was actually going to believe me. Unable to endure the terror any longer, Monica moved out of her home and for nearly 30 years, she was free of her tormentors. 
everything was fine. I had never seen the Grim Reaper or the Gargoyle again. But even after all that time, Monica could not forget those terrible encounters. That thing with that Grim Reaper. My mom would bring up the story. Staring at me. Certain flashbacks that she would have. So there was a Gargoyle and a Grim Reaper. That would torture her at night. I can see it as clear as day. That must have been terrifying. It was. To see her upset, and I knew right then and there that something wasn't right, that it did haunt her. It's hard to forget. Mom, Mom, it's gonna be okay. It's all in the past. In 2018, Monica came back from a trip with some unexpected consequences. I went on a little retreat, just Try not to think about work or any undue stresses. However, when I got home, I started to feel horribly ill, both physically and mentally. Oh. I was extremely depressed, which is not like me at all. <sighs> I couldn't sleep, completely restless. <sighs> And then I heard a voice, hello. very sinister sounding, saying, hello. hello. There was nothing there. It was very ominous. I knew that something was really wrong and that whatever I had experienced when I was younger was back. She couldn't get out of bed. She could barely eat. Whatever had happened on that retreat when she had come back, it's a side of my mom that I haven't seen. Then, after nearly 30 years of looking over her shoulder, Monica's worst fears became a reality. I went down the hallway into the bedroom and stopped dead in my tracks. <gasps> Right at the very end of the bed, the Grim Reaper that I had seen when I was younger was standing there. I was frozen in fear. Everything that I had experienced 30 years ago was back. I was, I was petrified. I thought that this was behind me. It was just a voice of fear. Almost 30 years ago, Monica Polino was terrorized by the Grim Reaper. She thought it was all behind her, but now it was back. Oh, it was just a voice of fear. He also stopped dead in his tracks. What is that? That's when I had seen what my mom had been describing years ago. The Grim Reaper was back. An evil entity is not bound by time or space. Therefore, time is irrelevant. The Grim Reaper is definitely not bound by time or space. When Alex verified seeing exactly what I was seeing, I was not imagining. I started to freak out. I started to cry. I started to lose it. I said, I can't go through this again. I just can't. I cannot do this again. Alex. Oh. To see her crying, it tore me apart inside. As scared as I was, I knew that I had to do something right then and there to help get rid of this Grim Reaper. You're not welcome here. Get out. Get out. Suddenly, it wasn't in the room. It was in the same form, in the same stance outside. Like it shifted. It kind of just transformed. <gasps> Go away! And again, I told it to get out, leave. You're not wanted here. We don't want you here! Alex was so strong. He stood up to it. 
where I, on the other hand, was extremely petrified. You have to get help. It wanted to hurt her. It wanted to scare her. <laughs> Alex said to me, Mom, you really need to get some serious help. You cannot deal with this on your own. Archangels. Monica called in medium Lori Kinraid and her team for help. Protectors of light. I've been a medium for my entire life. Rid this home of negative presence. The Grim Reaper has many different connotations. The most common would be the angels of death. I knew we had to move quickly because of what we were dealing with. There was really no time to wait. Archangels, protectors of light. Bless this home and protect it. The whole idea is to make the entire home sacred ground, basically. We, we need to purify it to a point where it's just uninhabitable for them. Archangel, protector of light, bless this house. The cleansing proceeded uneventfully until they reached the master bedroom. Read this. Ah! Read this. Oh, it just about knocked me over. The energy was was so intense. Bless this home and rid it of its negative energy. Monica's tormentor wasn't going to leave without a fight. It would say certain words, evil, evil hell, hell, blood. Not only have we seen it, but now it's trying to taunt us. So we wouldn't pursue the cleansing. Faced with such powerful resistance, Lori decided to conduct a crossing over ceremony. Guides, When angels. we do the crossing ceremony, we call in all our guides, angels, helpers, Ancestors, aid us in crossing over this evil spirit. We create a vortex of light energy and ask that everything be consumed in this vortex. Aid us in crossing over this evil spirit. The team was actually getting extremely ill. Alex and I had severe headaches. I was getting weaker, weaker by the moment. Guide us in crossing over this evil spirit. Right at the very last second, right before we're about to close the vortex. <gasps> the Grim Reaper appeared a couple of inches away from my face <gasps> to try to scare me one last time. You can't get rid of me. I'm with you forever. <sighs> it was extremely terrifying. I had never seen, <laughs> I had never seen it that close before. Lori told me that we need to be strong. Otherwise, everything that we had done, the entire clearing, everything, would have been just a waste of time. You don't belong here! Archangel Michael, rid me of this evil spirit! It's very important to stand your ground. Even if it is risky, you need to be smart about what you do, but you need to be firm. If you don't take control of your space, you will lose it. If you don't take control over yourself, you could potentially have this thing attach itself to you for the rest of your life. You don't belong here! Rid me of this evil spirit! Once he had shown himself to me, he had gone up, and I had visually closed the door. Monica actually stayed very strong. I was proud of her. She was able to keep her focus. This was not going to take over her life anymore. I was proud of myself for being strong. I remember my mom just kind of looking at me in awe. It was more of a relief like a huge weight had been lifted off. <laughs> I was extremely proud of her. Thank you. The exorcism was successful, and Monica was never visited by the Grim Reaper again. I honestly hope I never come across another story like this.
where someone's been haunted like this twice in their lifetime. Alex? I felt so much better after the exorcism was actually done. Now it feels just so much brighter already. The house felt a lot lighter. The illness and the sickness that I had been feeling, yeah. gone. See you at dinner. You bet. I can't express in words exactly how grateful I am. Creatures from the other side can take on all forms, shapes, and sizes. Sometimes they can be a recognizable entity, but on other occasions, creatures will be like nothing their victims have ever seen before. Paranormal Survivor, Story 5, Lizardman, Take 1. Mark? We moved into the house 2015. I was very excited. The children were excited. <laughs> and it was just a very happy time. The house was nice, still a good feeling. I was really excited to move in, it felt good. Summer Boudreaux and her two daughters loved their new space, but soon an eerie and unsettling energy descended upon the house. And then about a month later, I started to feel a little off. It was just like somebody's watching me. I just felt I'm not supposed to be in there. That's just the feeling you got that you weren't welcome. Summer's unease quickly turned into way more than just a feeling. I was sleeping. It was the middle of the night. And I just woke up all of a sudden. <gasps> Something had come across the bed. It crawled. It crawled across him like a lizard. It looked like the body of a human, but the head of a lizard. I've never seen anything like it before. It, I thought it was going to eat me. It wanted to hurt me. Summer Boudreau had found what she thought was the perfect home for her family. But not long after moving in, she was attacked by a creature from hell. It wanted to hurt me. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. I felt like my heart was gonna pop out of my chest. I was just petrified. And then it was gone. Everything was normal. I definitely thought, did I just dream that? Was that, did that just happen? I went back to bed and laid there, scared out of my mind. Down the hall, Summer's daughter Tia was having problems of her own. My room was freezing. No matter what, I tried heaters, more blankets. I started feeling uneasy. I felt like someone was watching you. It just gave me a really bad vibe in my room and a bad feeling. I'd wake up and see a shadow or someone standing over my bed. It looked like a figure, big and black. I didn't know what it was. <coughs> I was just scared out of my mind. Please go away, please go away, please go away. Please. <coughs> I just turned around and closed my eyes until they were gone. Please go away, please go away. It would affect me a lot because I wouldn't sleep and I usually would have to go to school the next day, so I'd be worn out. One night I woke up and I felt burning on my leg. So I looked and I had a big scratch. It was deep and it was long. The scratch would burn and it was painful. 
people would see the scratches and bruises and I couldn't explain it to them what was going on. I don't know how I got it. I was pretty freaked out. With the paranormal activity increasing in severity, Tia's nighttime visitations took an unexpected turn. I started seeing what looked like my grandfather in my room. He was clear as day. Me and my grandfather were really close, and so like after he died, I was just heartbroken, and so seeing him, I felt safe, and so I was happy to see my grandfather again. The comforting presence didn't last long. Tia suspected something wasn't quite right. He was just behind my door. He wouldn't come out, he wouldn't talk to me. He'd just sit there staring at me. After a while, it did take a big toll on me. It felt like, I just felt sad. After I saw my grandfather, I just, realized how much I missed him, I guess. He's there, so, sorry. Summer had no idea who had been appearing in her daughter's room, but eventually Tia couldn't keep it a secret any longer. Hey, I told my mom that I saw my grandfather behind my door. I keep seeing grandpa in my room. Honey, what do you mean you saw grandpa? Well. I told her he was hiding. It looked like he was hiding. I don't know if it's actually him or something else. I believed it wasn't him. I don't think he would have scared her and hid behind the door. Right away, I didn't feel like it was him. I don't think he's your grandpa. My mom told me not to talk to it just in case if it was something evil and I'd be letting it in and it could do worse stuff. I don't want you to talk to him anymore, okay? I felt it was something sinister. I didn't feel comfortable, and I just felt that it was an evil spirit trying to manifest as my father. Let us welcome it in so it could stay with us. You can stay away, okay? Evil spirits and demonic entities are notorious for shape-shifting and mimicking. They are definitely more than capable of manifesting into somebody that the living would trust. Any form of communication is an invitation. Believe me, they are just waiting to infiltrate. I was scared of being in the house. I thought something in there was gonna hurt me or my little sister or my mom. With Tia now wise to its plan, the lizard entity starts to prey on the youngest member of the family, three-year-old Ashley. Um, come over here, I have a surprise for you. One day we were playing in Ashley's room and she said, Mommy, the monster just went in your room. And I said, well, what monster? Look, Mommy, look at the lizard. Well, as soon as she said it, I thought about that night that I was freaked out. I wanted to cry. Like I just wanted to pick her up and get her out of there. Whatever it was, was targeting my daughters. What is this? Man, what is this thing that's in my house? You know, it's not normal to see something like that. It was gonna hurt her. I couldn't protect my daughters. I needed outside help. When Summer contacted me, I was very worried for her and her children. I wanted to get in there as soon as possible. As a psychic medium, I feel out any energies or entities in the home, and from there, we'll conduct an investigation. I can see spirits, I can hear spirits, and I can pick up their emotions. My assistant and I brought EVP recorders, spirit boxes, and began to investigate. I was drawn to Tia's room. I could feel a temperature change and I could feel the energy becoming dense. There's something about this room. Katie could sense a dark energy start to envelop the home. 
Immediately, the EMF equipment was spiking dramatically. I knew something was about to show itself. I immediately got a burning sensation on my side. Felt like hot pokers. As soon as I pulled up my shirt, I could see a 10-inch gouge along my side. There was blood coming from it, and immediately I started to freak out. I knew this thing was not nice. Spirits have to be extremely powerful to inflict pain on someone. They also have to be malevolent. This is something that is trying to get your attention and not in a nice way. All of a sudden, the lights were flickering. The ghost box just went off like crazy. There was a lot of chatter coming through it. They were speaking and screaming through it. The activity was becoming alarming, and Katie realized that the evil entity could potentially harm everyone in the home, but she had to investigate one more room to make sure. We were all terrified. We knew at that point that there was something there. Oh, the attic doesn't feel good at all. It feels like something is gonna come at you. It's not a welcoming feeling. All of us felt really freaked out. I went down one end of the hall. Summer and my assistant went down to the other end. I walked the rooms and there was nothing there. I knew something was hiding. And as I turned around to walk back, I see this big, dark, reptilian shadow figure staring back at me. Summer, stop! As soon as she said that, you heard loud, get out. Get out! After months of torment, Summer Boudreaux called in psychic medium Katie Turner to rid her home of an evil lizard entity. But it wasn't going to leave quietly. Summer, stop! Get out! The voice sounded dark and demonic. Get out! I panicked and ran out of the attic. Katie's assistant was right behind me. Where's Katie? I was left on my own, in the dark. All I could hear was this voice. Get out! Ah! Katie, what are you doing? And that's when I decided, okay, it's time to get out of the attic. When Katie came down, she looked physically scared and shook up from the experience. I was definitely worried seeing Katie like that. She does this all the time. You know, what's in my house? And what has got her so spooked? In all my years, I've never seen what I saw that night. Get out! The entity in Summer's house was most definitely evil. It was malevolent in nature. It was demonic in nature. This thing only wanted to wreak havoc. If this wasn't taken care of, people could be harmed or even killed. I knew right then and there that I had to cleanse the property. I immediately got my cleansing salts and holy water. Be gone! Evil spirits, be gone! To cleanse negative energy and bring in positive energy. Darkness, you are not welcome here. Only the light of the higher power is welcome here. Salt the doorway. Darkness, be gone! Evil spirits, be gone! We cleansed the whole downstairs but none of us wanted to go back into the attic. So we put a line of salt at the top step and hoped for the best. Salt is a very grounding mineral. Salt also has a vibration that dispels negativity. We will often use salt in doorways, anywhere that we can set up a perimeter so that the negative energy cannot return. Be gone! Only the light of the higher power is welcome.
welcome here. Be gone, evil spirits, be gone! Oh my God. Immediately after the cleanse, you could feel that the air was lighter. You did it. Summer immediately felt better. <laughs> Any malevolent or negative energy died completely. <gasps> In all my years of investigating, this by far was one of the scariest cases I've ever come across. After Katie did the cleanse, the house felt, it was like a relief. The activity just stopped. There was no issues. After Katie was finished, the house felt better. Like, I didn't feel like someone was watching me everywhere I went. I felt like I could actually go and have a good night's sleep in my bed. I felt free, I guess. Oh, not at me, silly. I was happy. I was really happy. I felt like I had done what I needed to do to rid our home and my children of this entity. I didn't have to worry that something was going to attack my daughters. There we go. Oh, Some of the most terrifying and dangerous creatures from hell are demons. For their victims, the dangers of being possessed or seriously hurt can become all too real. Paranormal survivor, demon at the door, take one, Mark. I moved into the house with my mom. I was 18. You see everything. I love it. Very nice environment, like happy. It's beautiful, mom. Quiet, still, like nothing out of the ordinary. It wasn't until Brittany and her mother started to settle into their new home that they began to notice that something wasn't quite right. I started hearing noises in the beginning. It was very, very subtle. I almost thought it was just the house noises. At first, it sounded like as if you picked up like a glass marble and you dropped it a couple feet and then it fell on hard wood and bounced like it would be rolling freely. And I'm like, what is this? Probably just the pipes in the house, love. Did you hear that, babe? It was as if someone was just like knocking inside the walls. Felt like it was building up. It's king. It felt like there was something looming over me every time I set foot in the house. The unexplained noises and knocking in the house were soon joined by something much more bizarre and disturbing. I had stepped out of the shower one night. I'm drying myself off, and then I look in the bathroom mirror, and on the wall, there's a face. And I'm like thinking to myself, that's not makeup or paint. It just appeared like black seeping out of the wall. And that's the part where it really blew my mind. And I'm like, this isn't mold. Mold can't create faces. This is something else. After 18-year-old Brittany Robinson moved into a new home with her mother, she started to have strange and troubling experiences. This isn't mold, this is something else. It started to change into a more detailed, evil-looking face, very pointy, just looked very menacing. Then, 
Brittany noticed something else. I would smell death. It was putrid. I had to get rid of it. I reacted very swiftly, trying to stay calm. It was a good two hours of scrubbing. <laughs> so difficult that it was starting to hurt my skin. At one point, it went right all into my palm and it burned. <laughs> the more I scrubbed, the more I felt freaked out. Like not myself. Like I'm scrubbing something off, I'm shaking it off, but it wasn't leaving. Shaken, Brittany tried to get some sleep, but she was plagued by terrible dreams. Oh, I was coming out of a nightmare, but I couldn't move. I was there, like, looking around. I could only use my eyes. I couldn't even breathe. It feels like your heart's gonna literally explode out of your chest. You still have that nightmare feeling when you wake up, but now you can't move at all, and you feel completely vulnerable to whatever is happening. When we sleep, we tend to be the most vulnerable. Our subconscious opens up completely. It, it can also be a portal, so things can easily come in while you're in your dream state. My dream was trying to tell me that it was something extremely dark, maybe ancient <gasps> and evil. Terrifying. It was all night, hours. And then I moved a little bit, and I got my body back. That wasn't the last time Brittany was paralyzed. Soon, it started to happen every night. The night, I'm not sleeping. It was hell. The only thing keeping Brittany sane was her relationship with her boyfriend, Curtis. My relationship with Curtis at the time was still a new, blossoming, budding relationship. Very happy. But the sense of peace wouldn't last long. When I first met her, there was uh, a few things that she was telling me about, but I kind of wasn't believing. But then things started to happen that I noticed. Curtis and I were messaging on the computer. It was after school, and he was at his mom's. Within the conversation, I noticed uh, a few things started to kind of feel weird. I had started returning messages to him in huge paragraphs of just random letters. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel like, like something human was sending it to me. It kind of went fuzzy, almost as if I blacked out. Out of nowhere, she kind of just like left the conversation. I'm like, where are you? It felt disturbing. Like I just, I felt like just a weird presence. He received a message from my end saying, you're not gonna see her, she's mine now. Then it just says she is gone and I, I have her. In a panic and worried for Brittany, Curtis rushed over to her house. I had blacked out. I had a splitting headache, as if it was splitting the entire half of my head just right open. I was trying to get her attention through the window. She seemed like she didn't really see me, just not really herself at all. It looked like she was under something else's control. I felt odd, like I was awake, but I wasn't me. And then that rancid, putrid smell is in the air again. By this point, Brittany was fully possessed by something evil. I was just like, I'm gonna hurt this guy. But I don't know why, I, I, I would never think that. I would never want to intentionally stab him or cut him up, that's horrible. 
When someone is possessed, an evil entity has taken over their mind, their body, and their soul. They're completely unaware of what's happening to their physical being at that moment in time. Whatever the evil entity wishes to do, it'll do. And sometimes it'll even lash out and potentially kill someone. When I had reached for the door handle to unlock it and let him in, I felt for a split moment that, oh my God, he's gonna get hurt. I knew, oh my God, like I could probably die if I opened this door. Brittany Robinson has been possessed by something lurking in her home. Concerned, her boyfriend Curtis has rushed over, putting his own safety at risk. I knew, oh my God, like I could probably die if I opened this door. I still decided to do it anyway. I had to help. But I was really scared, I thought the worst. But the moment he rushed in over the threshold, I felt warm again. <gasps> When I came out of it, I felt stinging, burning pain. Oh! My stomach was littered with scratches. Oh my ah! God! In groups of three, like choo, 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 cross, cross. She was bleeding all over her stomach. How did that happen? It didn't make sense how it could have happened. Her nails, there was no blood or anything on them. I didn't see anything. I'm assuming it happened when I blacked out. Oh, it's freaky to talk about that part. Um, I still have scars. We gotta get you cleaned up, okay? Okay. Come here. <gasps> Terrified by the brutal nature of the attack, Brittany and her mother began the process of cleansing the house. Started doing research into this type of occurrence. I realized that this could be something very, very bad. My mom and I went through each room, saging, we had our crystals in our hand. We had sigils on the candle for protection. We went full detail on this. I had laid down purified white salt at every door, threshold, every windowsill. The entire perimeter, the salt is to help prevent anything from entering your space. It's not foolproof, but it does help a lot. The cleanse worked for a while, but the worst was yet to come. One night I'm laying on the couch, and the moment I open my eyes, I see a big black mass, but not human. Blacker than black. There were no definite facial features. But skull, neck, bones, in the shape of a male figure with really long, creepy hands, fingers. Um, it kind of burns in your brain. The demon was trying to find a way to get past the salt defenses Brittany and her mother had set up. I heard knocks on the glass, like it's just waiting, with sharp, sharp talons. My heart was imploding. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like I was prey, and it was the predator. Something out there looming right over you, and you can't move. Very, very, very frightening. It felt as if my life literally flashed before my eyes. As if I'm going to be stuck with this thing my whole life. <laughs> Paralyzed, Brittany could only watch in horror as the demon tried to get inside for over eight hours. Brittany's salt defenses held firm, and when the sun rose, the demon vanished. I felt a sense of relief, but if you're gonna be willing to wait outside the window for hours and just watch me, 
What are you going to do next time? Afraid to spend another awful night in the house, Brittany decided to move in with Curtis. This experience has made me aware of the true ferocity of these things. I just can't get out of here fast enough. I'm hopeful for the future that this won't continue to happen to her. All right, I'll see. And that she's going to continue to heal from it mentally and physically. This is going to be good. Yeah. yeah. After fighting through it together, we felt stronger together as a couple. Having an idea of something that crazy. Currently, I feel like I'm a soldier preparing for my next battle. Don't know when or where, but I'm ready.